welcome to another church online experience this morning. You are all welcome. I know it's still very strange, but we're going through it. And uh, we just hope you have um, a good time where you are this morning, just watching uh, this service. Special welcome to New Life Family Church in Stone. You are very welcome. And Hull Elim as well. I know a few of you guys are watching us online today. And so we hope you are um, blessed by the service as well. But also to you that are watching elsewhere, maybe it's your first, first time watching us online today and thinking, what is this? We don't really know, but we're going through it and uh, we just hope you enjoy it anyway. But we want you to know that God loves you um, so much and um, we hope you are blessed as well today. We've got a number of things coming up um, in the next 45 minutes or so. Um, we've got a couple of worship songs. Jay, one of our ministers, is going to bring um, the word today and I know it will bless you. Um, but what I want you to, to know today where you are is that God wants to meet with you. No matter what season we find ourselves in, God stays the same. Seasons change, but his love stays the same and he still wants to meet with you. How amazing is that? And the Bible says, as we draw near to him, he draws near to us. So I would encourage you today where you are to draw near to God in what way is best for you, whether it is to stand up, sing out loud, belt your voice out, or just maybe just take in the words that is being sung over you. Um, whatever way is best, God still wants to meet with you and um, that does not change. In a moment, I'm going to hand over to Denise. Denise um, is our worker here at Derby City Church. She oversees the Hope Centre, um, looks after the running of the food bank. I know you would want to know um, a bit of an update, Church, on what is going on in terms of our food bank, so I will hand over to Denise in a moment as she will just share a few things with us. But let me pray before we get into that. Lord, I thank you for each one that is watching online um, this morning. Thank you for the amazing love that you have for them. Thank you that you know them by name. By name. And Lord, Thank you that you stay the same, that seasons change, circumstances don't seem to be going great, Lord, but your love for us stays the same and you are here. You want to meet with us. We thank you for the God that you are. We put our trust in you. We praise you because you are good and you are faithful. And um, I just pray a blessing over every single person that is watching us right now. Come and meet with us. Our hearts are open to you in your mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let me hand over to Denise, who's just going to update us with the food bank. Thank you. Hi, just a quick update here. It's Denise at the Hope Centre. Um, we've been busy, really busy today, really, really busy again. We're open still on a Tuesday afternoon and a Friday morning. We've got some amazing volunteers and I just want to thank them for all their hard work. Obviously, with the lockdown, we just can't have many people here. And many volunteers, but the ones we've got are working so hard and so flat out. I just want to say thank you. Um, a couple of updates. We've been Tuesday, last Tuesday was the busiest day ever. 113 bags, which is a lot of food. And a thank you again for everybody that has donated. And we're still accepting food, so you can still drop off here. So Tuesday we're here all day, and Friday we're here till about half one. So please feel free to just drop anything off to us. But also, we're desperate for carrier bags, reusable carrier bags. So if you've got any in your cupboards, you can either drop them off here or email the office or ring or text and we can come and pick them up. So I just want to say, we're still working hard. Thank you for all your support and um, stay safe, stay well. Miss you all and we'll see you really, really soon, I hope. Morning church. Oh, that's really exciting to hear what Denise and all the volunteers at the Hope Centre are getting up to. Great to know we're still serving this city and making a real difference. Uh, it's great to know that God is our Jehovah Jireh. And uh, just as we reflect on that time, I'm reminded of the story in Genesis where Abraham is asked to consider sacrificing Isaac. And then at that point where he's about to do it, God comes and says, I see your heart. I see what you're up to and it's okay, you don't need to go through with it. And uh, Genesis 22 and verse 14 says this. So Abraham called that place Jehovah Jireh and to this day it is said on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. 
Abraham trusted in God for all that he needed. We're trusting in God for the Hope Centre. And I don't know about you this morning, you may be needing God to be your Jehovah Jireh. You might be needing him to provide for you for all that you need, or you might want to give him praise and thanks. And as we move into this next time of worship, let us either be giving, using that as an opportunity to give thanks, or using as that as a time to come before God and say, we need you. We need you to be our provider at this time. So let's worship him together.
Derby City Church. My name is Nathan and I'm part of the youth team at the church. And today I want to share a short scripture reading with you as well as committing today's main message into God's hands through prayer. Um, so I'm going to read the scripture and it is from Psalms 112 verse 6 to 8. It says, surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. They will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their hearts are secure. They will have no fear. In the end, they will look in triumph on their foes. Let's have faith in that word this morning. And now I'm going to commit today's message into God's hands. Father God, thank you for the power of your word. Thank you, Lord, that we can be steadfast in you, that we don't have to have fear in our hearts, Lord. And so we take that word with faith this morning and we pray, Lord, that um, the word that we're about to hear will speak to everyone's situation right now. I pray, Lord, that it will speak comfort into our hearts. Let us have peace through what we hear right now. And I pray, Lord, that there shall be transforming power that comes from today's word, that truly we will not come away from it being the same. It shall transform us from the inside out and we shall be drawn closer to you, Lord, um, no matter what stage we are in our faith at the moment. Uh, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, Derby Church. And I believe that there are people online from Hull Church and Stoke. Um, we welcome you all. Uh, what a great day that we can come together and gather around the Word of God this morning. It's got so much hope in it, so much strength in it, such comfort. What a privilege to come to the Word of God this morning. It's got so many lives in it who have been through so much. It talks about God's faithfulness, bringing through people through storms. In fact, it says that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, men and women of God who came through so much and God preserved them. God strengthened them through many, many difficulties. He showed his faithfulness and we must take great encouragement from that, great strength of these lives who are there as an example so that we can encourage ourselves in the Lord this morning. I want to speak to you just for 20 minutes. The title of my sermon is The Voice of Hope. And I pray with all my heart that you would hear his voice behind my voice this morning. Because if there's one thing we need to hear today, if there's one thing we need, it's more than just words, but a voice that has the power to bring comfort and deliverance and help in situations. And ever, ever there was a voice, it was the voice of Christ. Let me read a passage of scripture to you from Mark chapter 5 and verse 21. Now, when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, that she may be healed and she will live. So Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him and pressed in on him. Down to verse 35. While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, Your daughter is dead. Why bother the teacher anymore? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, Don't be afraid, just believe. He permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. Then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a turmoil and those who wept and wailed loudly. When he came in, he said to them, why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. But when he had put them all outside, he took the father and the mother and of the child and those who were with him and entered where the child was lying. Then he took the child by the hand and said to her, little girl, I say to you, arise immediately. The girl arose and walked, for she was 12 years of age, and they were overcome with amazement. I want to speak to you this morning, the voice of hope. Verse 36, don't be afraid, but just believe. 
It's a short statement. It's a short word. Don't be afraid, just believe. But it is packed with possibilities. It is packed with encouragement. It is packed with power. And it is packed with hope. It is packed with comfort because it never came from the words of just a man. It came from the very lips of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, to a man who was in a desperate situation. It's a word of encouragement to a situation that was impossible. It was a word that came from Christ and we know that Christ came full of truth and he's not a man that he should lie. It's a word that tells us no matter what the situation, no matter what the trouble, no matter what the storm, there is not a situation that should frighten us, that should bring us to the point of unbelief when he says, just believe. It's not just the voice of a man, this is the voice of Christ. It's a divine calling to don't be afraid, but to believe. In other words, do you trust me that I can do what I says I can do? There's a man with a sick daughter, and we know that she's dying. He was a synagogue ruler, so we know that he was in a religious system. But this religious system, they probably read the word, but there was no spirit in it. It was formal, it was dead, it had no power to heal the broken hearted, open blind eyes or set the captive free or he would have been there. But what he was involved in had no power to deliver or touch the impossible situation that he found himself in. So he's a desperate man. He'd heard stories about Jesus. He'd heard about the power of this man. He heard that this man wasn't just speaking, but actually people were being healed. People were being forgiven. Blind eyes were opening. The word about Jesus and his fame and his power and his authority was going all over the region. And people started to believe this man. They said nobody spoke like this man. He speaks with authority. And this man is, daughter is sick. And halfway through going to the house, the mourners come. People come with bad news. The situation got worse. And they said to him, don't bother Jesus anymore. Your daughter is dead. Now, right at that point, he could have thrown in the towel and said, this is impossible now. There's no point in bothering Jesus anymore. But no, Jesus actually overheard those words and Jesus overruled them and said to the man, don't be afraid, just believe. Now fear and faith are trying to gain ground in you and the situation we are in. There is a lot of difficult situations at the moment. There's a lot of sorrow, a lot of heartache, a lot of pain. And you're either going to fill your boat, you're going to fill your life with fear or with faith. And the both of them are trying to gain ground in you. But there's a word from God this morning that says, don't be afraid. Just believe. Now this man heard those words. See, I believe this man came to Jesus with a level of faith or he wouldn't have went to him. When his daughter was sick, he went on a journey to find him because he knew this man had power to deliver. But that faith was challenged when the situation got impossible. She actually died. And Jesus was in essence, saying to him, you came to me in faith. Now, don't be afraid. Don't panic. I'm speaking to you directly. Don't be afraid. Keep, continue to believe that who you came to with your request is able to do more abundantly than we can ask or think. If anybody should have faith, it should be us who know him already. And he's saying to us this morning, don't be afraid. Just believe. Faith started us on this journey, and by faith, we should continue. The situation was impossible. The situation 
took this man's strength and energy because you see fear does that fear takes your energy it takes your strength it robs you of your energy of tomorrow that's why today is the day the Lord has made you must believe God wants to strengthen our our faith this morning fear will empty you of your courage fear will empty you of your strength fear will take your energy but faith will make you walk on stuff where other people sink. faith will keep you at a level faith will keep you from sinking and going into despair and anxiety and worry if you just believe it's an incredible challenge and I'm not saying it's easy but I'll tell you there's an alternative you know we cannot believe and we will sink or we can believe and go from strength to strength you see what is it that overcomes the world is it not our faith what is faith it's trust in Jesus it's trust in his word it's trust in what he says he can do he can do it's trust in the promises are yes and amen it's trust in that if God is for us who can be against us if we truly believe that if we truly believe that what would we have to be fearful of Just believe. Now there's battles in that. There's struggles in that. But by God's grace and with the strength of the Spirit, we actually can grow in faith and go from strength to strength. We can trust the Word of God because we know God's character, that He's full of grace, He's full of mercy, He's full of truth, and He loves us. And He's got a plan and purpose for every one of us. I want to have a a word this morning for the lonely. Are you lonely this morning? Then there's a voice that came from heaven that in the words of your very Bible, that are not just words, but actually a voice. And if you're lonely this morning, you're on your own and you're separated from family and loved ones. I've got a word for you this morning for the lonely. He says this, I am with you. Yes, hallelujah. Yes, he said, I can walk through walls. I'm not isolated. I am with you. You can speak to me. I will strengthen you. I will encourage you. I will comfort you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Hallelujah. What a saviour. What a covenant keeping God we have. We can see all through the Bible. Men who believed in God were never put to shame. They did not shrink back through trials and, 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 and storms and suffering. And they did. But they had nothing but a faith in God. The enemy could not take their song in the night. Oh, may God give us a song in the midst of these troubles. May I praise the Lord at all times. May his praise be continually on my lips. There's something powerful about praise. There's something powerful. When Paul was on lockdown, him and Silas started singing songs in the midnight hour. They could take them and they could lock them down, but they could not take the praise and the joy and the strength that was in them by the grace of God. And I'm telling you, that's not easy. And I know my statement because some are suffering more than others. Some are suffering loss, great loss. But there's a faith that gives you a song in the night that you sing through the tears. You can lift your hands while we are in a prison because you know that God is good and his love endures forever and that he can sustain us in this and comfort us in this. There's a word to the brokenhearted. He, his voice would come in this morning to you and say, I can heal the brokenhearted. I can touch you right where you are. I don't need to be standing in front of you. A man came to him and said, you don't even need to come to my house. If you just say the word, my servant will be healed. And by the time he got home, it was done. He can do it this morning. He can comfort those troubled waters. That voice can come into your storm. That voice can come into the furnace with you. That voice can come in when you go through the fire, when you go through the waters, when you feel like you're in a den of lions. When you're feeling fearful, there's a voice that can speak to the storm and say, be still. There's a voice that can come and say to the worried. And there there would be ample opportunity for that in this season, for all of us. But he says, don't worry. He says, don't worry. You know, he's got, when he says, don't worry, he has an assurance that he can meet your needs. Don't worry about what you'll eat or what you will wear. Pagans worry about this. Your heavenly father knows your needs. Oh, we might not have our, some of us might not have the same comfort when we come through this, that there's a father who said, I will meet your needs. Are you anxious? He would say, be anxious for nothing, but in everything. 
pray. And Don't worry about what you will eat, about what you will wear. And when I say we make them through with less comfort, I'm talking about material things, not the comfort that comes from the voice of Christ in every given situation. The men and women of the Bible, anybody who's been fully surrendered, has, you know, they've not had easy journeys. Yes, they were blessed. Yes, there was prosperity. Paul said, I've had plenty and I've had nothing. I've learned to be content in every situation because he knew the shepherd. There's a comfort that only Christ can bring that nothing else can bring and he can meet your needs. The words of Christ are the very words of God. John 12, 49, let me read it to you. For I did not speak on my own, but the Father sent me, commanded me to say all that I have spoken. So the, the, the word Jesus is the very voice of God to me and you. A voice that says, I can forgive you this morning. And maybe you've not come through this with the best of colours. Maybe you've seen things about yourself you never knew before. That happened to Peter. I'll die with you. I'll follow you anywhere. And I think he probably meant it. But God had to allow him to be shaken. And maybe you've been shaken. I want to tell you, there's a God who has a word for you this morning. It says, I pray for you that your faith won't fail. And he who started a good work in you will finish it. Give yourself grace this morning if God has been dealing with you during this time as he has with us all. It's a voice that says, let not your heart be troubled. Oh, the heart that's troubled. You're not sleeping. You're restless. But there's a voice that comes off the page. It's not just a voice. It's a person. Do you know you have the Holy Spirit with us today? And he's going to remind us of the words of Christ. He's going to make them such a reality. More than just fridge magnets, more than just promise boxes. All good to remind us. But an actual experience that your heart can know peace and not be troubled. How amazing, how supernatural is this voice that it can do that? A voice that says, come to me, all you who are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Blessed be his name. A word and a voice that spoke to Lazarus and told him to come forth when he was dead. Don't tell me that's not supernatural. We're meant to live in the supernatural. We're meant to believe for the supernatural. Our faith is meant to be tested. We're meant to stretch out and believe this word. We're meant to take him at his word. His word. If we truly believe that no weapon formed against us should prosper, if we truly believe if God is for us, who can be against us? If we truly believe that, what would we fear today? With this faith, we overcome. It's a voice that can calm the storm when the waves are coming over the boat. I've been there. I've been there. And so have you many times. And you can look back. And you can encourage yourself in the Lord today that the God who delivered you back then can deliver you today. And you have been in situations where you've had supernatural peace. You've had joy when you should have been sad. Peace when you should have been troubled because you heard the voice of God speaking to you saying, follow me. Now the road's not been easy, but you've found a joy and a comfort and a song in it. It's a voice that says when you go through the fire, isn't that comforting? When you go through the waters, I will be with you. John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice. And if you can hear it this morning, he's saying, don't be afraid. Just believe. I mean, a child can believe. A dying thief on a cross can believe. A dying man on a bed can believe. The intelligent, the weak, the frail, the uneducated. Oh, God has made a way. And he says, oh, you just believe. This morning, in my own life, will be 30 years this year that I finished Teen Challenge. I was in a terrible mess through wrong choices and drug addiction and, and drinking. Many, many years of my life were lost and ruined with those choices, full of guilt, regret and pain. Many voices came to me, many voices, and said, Jay, stop taking drugs, stop taking drink. Don't do this, don't go here, don't do that. And you know, they were good advice, but there was no power in those voices. 
and even if they did, uh, even if it was good advice, I, I had a desire to do it, but I had no power to set myself free from my fears and my anxieties. It wasn't just taking drugs, it wasn't just drinking. My life was full of fears of tomorrow. I was scared of my own shadow. I was frightened of everything. I was an anxious man. I walked into a church and I heard a man preaching and he said, Jesus came and died for sinners. And that morning I asked God, I heard a voice that was like no other voice. It was so powerful. I wept and I wept. And I knew that morning, I asked him into my life, I was forgiven. I felt a power come into me in my life. I started a journey. Just like Paul the Apostle, Acts 9.4, it says this, that in Acts 9.4, Paul, who was a violent man, persecuting the church, he said, he fell to the ground and a voice said to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? You see, people have been hearing the voice of God. They may think you're crazy, they may think you're mad, but a changed life. They cannot argue with a testimony of the power of a changed life. And I went, after I went out of that church, and I was struggling. The church sent me a teen challenge, and it will be 30 years ago this year. And 30 years ago, I've never had a cigarette or a drink or a drug since then. That voice, the power of that voice has kept me free. Now, I've not got a perfect life. I've never had a perfect life, and neither is you. But all the other voices... Oh, I long to be free, but here was a voice that had the power to deliver me. Here was a voice that had the power to deliver me. I, I, I heard this poor man's cry and he delivered me from all of my fears. Hallelujah. What a saviour. He heard this poor man's cry and delivered me from all of my fears. Oh, what a saviour. What a mighty Christ we serve. A changed life through the power of God's word. Oh, it was so simple back then. I wasn't intelligent enough. I wasn't educated enough. I never had talent. I never knew the doctrines of the Bible. I never knew exactly where I was going and all my big purpose. But oh, I was just foolish enough to believe that God had a plan and purpose for my life. I was just foolish enough to believe that if he said it was possible, it was possible. I was just foolish enough to believe if he said he could heal, he could heal. But then we got on this hamster's wheel and it gets very complicated. But there's something simple about stripping everything down, everything being shaken and God saying, do you just believe? Oh, if a man just believes, I could hardly read and write, but I just believed. And he has led me to this very day. I've heard his voice. I hear him speaking to me. I speak to him on a daily basis and he speaks back to me through his Word. What a powerful voice. It can raise the dead. It can quicken. It can call the backslider back home. It can touch troubled hearts. Those with troubled minds, he can say, be still. He can heal troubled minds and hearts and bodies and souls with this voice, with this word. He says this morning, don't be afraid. Just believe. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, you may think, you know, are you in any trouble today? Listen, we've all got troubles. We're all fighting with something. I wish you could be in this living room to feel the joy because there's such a simplicity this morning I'm feeling in my heart that Christ is with us. No education, no talent, no money. How many people started off there and just believed God? Did you know all through, all through the Bible, men and women, God asked them always to do something they never had the ability to do, they never had the talent to do, they never had the money, they never had the means, they never had the power, but they believed God and they took him at his word. Abraham and Sarah, the reason she had a baby wasn't just because two old people came together. She had a child because the word of God had spoken to them and he told them what would happen. It was the power of God's voice and they took it and they believed it. And a woman who womb was dead carried a child and a child was born because God said it would be. What a powerful voice that's able to deliver the promise to each and every one of us. All the promises are ye and amen to us. And for our children, I believe. If it doesn't take faith to get us where we're going, it's illegitimate. 
my talent, my education, my good communication, my good planning. Thank God for them all, but it's not going to be enough to do what God's asking us to do. In these troubled times, will you stand on the word of God and the promises and the character of God and the faithfulness of God? And the testimony of God that anybody who's picked up the cross and follow him have never been put to shame. We will not shrink back. Oh, Derby Church and every other church that's listening, we will not shrink back. Yes, we may come and meet again. We may have tears in our eyes. We may have sorrow, but we will come because there's a song and a joy on us that this world never gave us and the world can't take it away. It was given from that which comes from above. And Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he's put it in us. Let's rejoice today. Let's sing a song in the dark. Let's sing a song in the night. I'm not saying we won't cry or we'll be in prison lifting our hands or we'll feel constrained. Or will feel it. No, David said, my tears have been my food day and night. They expressed their emotions. They expressed their feelings. But all the time through it all, they said, but we've got hope in God. He's my deliverer. He's my strength. There is grace for every situation. Oh, don't be afraid. Trust in God. The walls of Jericho came, came down. Not because he mends me, because of a word of God. Goliath came down because a man believed God. A little boy with a loaf and two fishes. He said, that's all I've got. And God said, just give me what you've got. I can do a miracle. If you give me what you've got, I can do a miracle with little and I can multiply it. That's the God we serve. He's a supernatural God. Oh, to see the supernatural again and to believe in it again. To trust his word. His word. Twelve men were told the Great Commission to go into all the world. When you think about it, twelve men, then 120 in upper room. What was this group of people going to do with that statement? Go into all the world? With what? With the word God gave us. He told us. So we believe it. And out of that little group, look what God has done for men and women who just believed. Luke 18, verse eight, when he comes back, he said this, when I come back, will I find faith? In other words, will there be a remnant of people? Will there be a people who still trust me, who still believe me? and who are still abiding in me and fellowshipping with me and, and by faith claiming all my promises that are yea and amen. I'm telling you, the voice of God, the same God who said, let there be light, and there is still light when he says it. The same God who spoke this world into being. Oh, I believe this world was made by God. It's sustained by the power of his word. If I believe that, why won't I believe his promises? Why won't I believe it when he says, don't be afraid? Just believe. So I say to Derby Church and all who are listening, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. We are surrounded by witnesses who are leaning over and saying, trust him, run to the end. Oh, some ran and conquered kingdoms and shut the mouths of lions. Others ran and were martyred. I can't tell every man's destiny and everybody's outcome, but I can tell you this, there's a God who says, if you follow me, I will not be ashamed to be called your God. In fact, in Isaiah it says, fear not for I am with you. I am your God. He's saying he is your God. He's given us his name. Let's trust him. Let's trust the word. I can hear a word this morning, I hear a voice saying, love one another, strengthen one another, encourage one another, help one another. This is going to be, there's great needs and as a body we are going to need to come together with this faith, with this faith. So let's be encouraged. He who's called us is faithful. Read the word, read the great stories of men and women who've done great things for God. No, it's, sometimes the road is not smooth, but there is one thing for sure. He's able to preserve us. He's able to keep us.
He's able to give us all the grace and all the strength we need. And listen, I am not making light of anybody's sorrow or any difficulties. Oh, let's pray for our world. Let's pray for our leaders. Let's pray through this time that God's word will bring comfort to many. It's not easy, but with God, all things are possible to him who believes. Church, I hope you've uh, been blessed by the word today and just worshipping God in your homes as well. I know it's very strange, um, but I really hope um, that you've been able to meet with God today through this online service. If you've been watching us online for the past few weeks, maybe just exploring um, what we do, who we are, um, or maybe you're watching for the first time today, I want to just give an opportunity 
um, to explain what this is all about. And um, the heart of the Christian faith is this, is that, is that God loves you so much. And um, the first point I wanted is to say is that, is, is God loves you. That he can't love you even less, he can't love you anymore. And no matter what you have done, that does not change the love that he has for you. Because he is love, that's his very nature. But we were separate from, from that love. And that's what the Bible calls sin. Um, we were separate from God. And that's for when we've decided to go our own way. And we haven't decided to go God's way. And... And that's what the X means, is that we have sinned. We have been separate from God. But because God loves us so much, he made a way. He made a way for us to come and have a relationship with him. And he did that by the cross. See, John 3.16 says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You see, the penalty of sin was death. And what God decided to do was, it was send his son Jesus um, into this world to be that sacrifice for us. To be the sacrifice for us. So he took, Jesus took all of that sin on himself on the cross. So we can have a relationship with the Father and have eternal life. What an amazing love. What an amazing grace. And the final point is this, is that now we have to decide, are we going to receive Jesus and go the way God has for us or are we going to continue to turn away from God? You can receive Jesus today and have eternal life today where you are right now. And all you need to do is just say a prayer. Just say, Father, I'm sorry for all the wrong that I've done. I'm sorry for turning away from you. But I know the, the love that you have for me. Come into my life. I choose you today and forevermore. Thank you for your amazing love. Thank you for Jesus dying on the cross for me. I, I invite you into my life. That's all you need to say. And if you said, said that prayer where you are, I would love to hear about it and just follow up on giving you a few resources as well. So just drop me an email, dan at derbycitychurch.co.uk and I would love to hear that if you receive Jesus today. I hope you've enjoyed this morning's service online. I know it's still very strange. But we are making it happen and just go with us on that. We are still thinking of you, church. We are praying for you through this, through this time. I know it's difficult. I know it's just so unexpected. But God remains the same. His love stays the same. And he has a plan. And we trust in him. If you are unable to give, um, as, as we are unable to give, financially to the Lord in, in the church building. We can still give online. Just go on our Give page um, on our website. There's another option, um, a couple of options how you can do that. Today at 2 p.m. there's a kids session, a mini video for um, our children to engage in parents. I would encourage you to watch that um, with your children. And young people will be going live tonight, seven o'clock on Instagram. Very welcome to join us as we have a bit of fun as well. Church, if there's anything you need, if there's any prayer requests, let us know. Um, we're with you through this time. We're get going through this season together. But have a great rest of the day. We love you. We're thinking of you. And God bless. <laughs>